There's a documentary out called McMillions. And McMillions is based around the Monopoly game that McDonald's used to run. And this was like one of the great marketing campaigns in business history. They did great. They teamed up with Parker Bros. People understood Monopoly. People liked hamburgers and fries. Like everything just worked together. And McDonald's would give out million dollar prizes. If you won the Monopoly game, you could get a vacation, like a cruise, you could win a Dodge Viper, but essentially the big one was the million bucks. And the way they would pay that out is you get $50,000 a month for 20 months. You're paid off, there's a million, thank you and goodbye. Store that away, you're gonna need to know how, how the payout worked for a little bit later. So the game is going on, and I remember when this game came crashing down, the tabloids were covering This was around 2002, 2003. All the tabloids were carrying it. This game was a scam. McDonald's Monopoly game, a big scam. And nobody gave a whole lot of credit to it only because it largely was carried by the tabloids. So I haven't really thought about this in about 15 years. All of a sudden, HBO comes out with a six-part special called McMillions Telling the Story. And I'm having a flashback to about 2003. Go, oh, I remember that. I remember when that came out, but I didn't know that that was really accurate. So basically there was a ring, okay? There was some kind of a ring that was hustling this game together. Somebody in that ring gets upset, makes a anonymous phone call to the FBI. Whatever agent happens to answer the phone, the person on the other end says, hey, have you ever heard of the McDonald's Monopoly game? FBI agent says yes. So why don't you look into why only Italian males in New York win? Click. Hangs up on the agent. So the agent's like, oh my goodness, what do I have to do? I got to go look into a game that's being played when you order a happy breakfast? Like, I got real work to do over here. But the world of social media had just started kicking off. And I don't think Facebook was around yet, but I think it was like MySpace. and it's something. The, the world of social media existed, though, on some level. So this agent very easily was able to just go look up everybody who won. And not only were they all Italian New Yorkers, they were all related. It was the brother, it was the cousin, it was the brother-in-law. They were all related. So the FBI goes, okay, something's going on here. So they set up a phone call with McDonald's. They tell McDonald's, something, something fugazi is going on with your game. We're on to you. The gig is up. Just a matter of how bad you want this to be. McDonald's goes, whoa, whoa hold on, time out. Why don't you come out into our offices and sit down? So the FBI does. They fly out to Atlanta. They go into the offices and McDonald's goes, hey, let us stop you right here just based on what you told us on the phone call. We pay out 10 winning tickets a year. 10 $1 million tickets are printed every year. Every year they come back, and every year we make good on the money. Why would we care? If there's any scam going on here, we sure as hell don't have anything to do with it. And the FBI goes, you know what? That makes sense. Okay, who do you guys work with? And McDonald's goes, we don't work with anybody except for a marketing firm. Here's the name of the marketing firm. They're an international firm. They're well-respected, but this is the only people that we work with. So the FBI raids their offices. They look around, the marketing firm's going, hey, we don't know anything about this. This is a great campaign, and this is just what we do, and we don't have anything to do. And the FBI goes, okay, that makes sense. Who else do you work with? And the marketing team goes, there's only one other company involved. We sit in the middle with McDonald's on top, and then we hire a printing company that actually prints out the stickers. Okay. That's how they did it. So the FBI rolls in to this printing shop. And the printing shop is a little less, a little less aggressive in absolving themselves because they said, look, th this does sound like something that could do. We as, as leadership, as the board, have nothing to do with it, the executives. However, we can't deny that, yes, somebody down in the printing room, if he knew where the winning sticker was, could peel that off, sell it out the back door. That's true. We don't know who did it, but we can't in good faith, tell you that that's not possible. So essentially, they go and they look into this, and that's exactly what happened. Somebody was just peeling them off the back, sending them out one door. You give me a kickback, go do whatever you can do with it. The end. What I thought that was interesting in the movie, though, is everybody who had won, they were trying to put in federal prison. And I'm looking at it going, no, wait, wait, wait just a second. If you're in a ring and you have all of the evidence and you're smartened up to the fact that this is corrupt and we're running these things out the back door for kickbacks, that is totally different 
Then if somebody knocks on your door, and there was one gal specifically in this, one gal specifically, in fact, they went to her. She was a black lady. She was uh, from Tennessee, so the Midwest, uh, and female. But they wanted that demographic specifically because they knew that they were giving all the wins to older Italian New York men. They wanted a different demographic. So one of the guy's wives in the ring made a suggestion to her husband that they fly to Tennessee and they bring in this gal. So they quite literally go knock on her door. She opens it and they say, hey, this ticket right here is worth a million dollars. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to cash it and you're going to give me my half in hundred dollar bills. Yes or no? She says, yes. They want to throw her in prison. And I'm looking at that going, man, I don't know what jury agreed to that. But if she has no more information that I will give you a ticket and you will give me half, guys, I will tell you right now, I take that deal all day long and I encourage and expect you to take that deal as well. Somebody shows up at your door and says, here's a winning lottery ticket. I'm going to give this to you. Give me my part in cash. Do we have a deal? Yes or no? Why would you possibly say no? And I don't know where you would automatically assume that something nefarious was going on. If that literally happened to me, one of you came up and go, hey, Chael, winning ticket. Go do whatever you got to do to win this thing. Bring me half. I'm going to assume that you just don't want the notoriety. You just don't want to go through the rigmarole or the steps. You don't want your picture in the paper. You don't want people calling you, asking you to borrow money. That's what I'm going to assume. And that I'm getting cut in for taking that kind of a service. Here's my half. Here's your half. And you know what? Who else agrees with me? The Oregon Lottery. You don't have to be the one that purchased the ticket. It says it right on the ticket. You just have to be in possession of the ticket. Meaning if you win the ticket, you can hand it to somebody else. Or meaning... If you leave it on a table and walk out and the waitress picks it up, it's now her ticket. Whoever's in possession of the ticket owns the ticket. It is the one that gets to participate in the ticket should it win. So that was the one part of it that I was a little confused on. And more than anything, I wanted to make you guys this video because I just saved you six hours of your life. It took me six hours to watch this documentary. Told you everything you need to know in 120 seconds. And for that, you're welcome.